So what's not to love about these things, eh? This is a speaker. Now, they're really easy to find. Actually, I have hundreds of them because I keep coming across them. And they always have this thing in here, which is a ceramic magnet. Now, if you knock that off, which is quite easy to do, you get these things. They're always polarised north-south on the faces, actually. So that's north, that's south. And they're just beautiful. The problem is, obviously, what to do with them. So when you get that off, you want the metal plates off. To get the metal plates off, you basically stick a thin-bladed screwdriver in there and whack it with a hammer, because they're just glued on. But they're also held on by the magnetic attraction, so they are a little tough to get off. But a little bit of persistence and some gentle persuasion, and they'll come off. And you have a disc like that, and then the other side you have a disc with this great big lump of metal. But more importantly, it's got a dimple right there in the centre. So that little dimple, I drilled it out with an 8mm drill bit and stuck a bit of 8mm bar down there, and it's a nice tight fit. Now, I did stick this in the lathe to turn it, but it was pretty true, actually. It doesn't take much turning at all. So if you don't have a lathe, just drilling it and whacking a bit of 8mm bar will do it. And, of course, the magnet fits beautifully on there and is nice and centred. So we get our little rotor all centered up. Now what we need to do is put some L brackets on here coming down there and we need eight of them and the L brackets I'm going to make out of this bit of one centimeter steel and they'll go on like that and bend over to cover that bit of the magnet and there'll only be four aside and that will give us eight poles. So what I've done to those magnet plates is weld on those little angle stubs. Now you can screw them on I just like welding things. So weld on those angle stubs and I've put the magnet back in now these ones point this way, and these ones go on like that, pointing the other way. And what we've done is twist the field around, so now we have north, south, north, south. And there's the rotor finished. Now we can see what we've done with the help of these two other speaker magnets and a compass. If I hold the speaker magnet like that, we can see it's pointing to south, flip it round, no hesitation, points to north. If I hold it like that though, and follow it around, not a lot happens apart from I'm possibly ruining that magnet. If I do that and follow it around, the north follows the north, and the south follows the south. And obviously that's because that's the south face, that's the north face, and here it's all a bit confused. What we've done here with these bends of steel is direct or bend that magnetic field. So now, if I hold that there, we get a straight north, then we get a straight south, then we get... <laughs> <laughs> straight north and uh, south and so on. So we've bent the magnetic fields to these poles. So now we have north, south, north, south pointing at the edge. OK, so I've lashed it up in this Heath Robinson arrangement with a few lab stands and I've wound some coils and put them in this Y configuration. There's one back here. And they're 120 degrees apart. I mean, we've got eight poles. So we're going to need like three, six, nine, twelve, something like that. Now, like this, it is a bit power hungry, so I've got it on a 30 amp electronic speed controller and we're going to turn it on in a second, of course, but I'm not really that interested in the efficiency, I just want to see the thing work. So if I twiddle the potentiometer a bit... And there it goes. That's awesome, actually. Okay, so it is more than possible to turn a speaker into a brushless DC motor. Okay, I thought that was pretty cool, but now what I want to do is take exactly the same arrangement, but turn it into a generator. What I've done actually is put a housing together because um, that is builder's board or Sintra board, just a drum really, and that rotor fits rather beautifully into that drum, nice and snugly. Now all we've got to do obviously is surround that with coils. Now, if you're anything like me, I hate winding coils. Really, it's one of those tedious jobs that you have to do when you're thinking about generators, and I absolutely hate it. However, I have been collecting and been sent quite a few of these things. This is a fan from a um, microwave oven. But if you take apart fans, you'll find this kind of induction motor. It's called a shaded pole motor all over the place and you keep coming across them and they're really easy to get these beautiful beautiful coils out and they come with an iron core all you do is pull that fan off undo the two screws that you'll see there or drill them out take out that drum 
That's the rotor, which is the shaded pole rotor, and you'll be left with that. Now grab yourself a pair of pliers or a um, vice or a G-clamp, squeeze the bottom, and that whole thing will fall out as one piece. It just puts a bend in there, and it falls out as one piece with its beautiful iron core. So, they're so quick to take out, I've got 14 of them sitting right here. Now then, let me give you a close-up of this, so you can see what the structure is like. So it's just a couple of squares of central board, and it's got a cavity there made out of a bit of plastic, and this drops straight in its little hole. There we go. And that makes a housing for our rotor. Now if we put the cap on that, it's actually quite a nice tight fit. That thing stands there like that, and I've got a collection of coils here, and all I'm going to do is glue those coils on there around it. Okay, so I've put nine coils on. I'll probably be able to get 12 if I give it a little feet, and to my mind, it looks a bit like an aeroplane engine, actually. So, we won't know which way around to wire these coils at this stage. So what we do is just pick a coil, attach a positive and negative, give it a spin, and we can get a volt, 1.1 volts out of that easily enough. So that one's working just fine. Pick the next one. Give it a spin, and sure enough, we get a volt out of it. Now take one of them, pop it to there, and link the other two Now if we spin it, we should get around about two volts out of it. And we're not, we're still getting one volt out of it, so we've wired it the wrong way. So swap those two pins over. And lo and behold, two volts. When we did it the first way, it was the wrong way. It's because they were wound in different directions and fighting against each other. Now we've actually got them the right way, the voltage will add up. And we keep on doing that, adding those voltages in. So turning this by hand by the time I've connected those should give me about 9 up volts or so. OK, and there it is, all wired up. I'm going to stick a drill on it and we'll see what kind of volts we can get out of it. <laughs> That's awesome, it's about 30 volts. Actually. So if we take this thing apart, now, improvements that we've made, obviously, are the uh, EMF is proportional to the distance squared, and these metal blocks just stop at that plastic. That plastic's about two, three millimetres thick, so if I took the trouble of cutting out the squares and pushing those blocks through so that they were nearer here, then we'll see an increase in generation. Obviously, a good thing to do would be to use a stronger magnet. I mean, I just used that recycled magnet from a speaker, and I'm pretty pleased about how it performed, actually, to say well, it was a speaker magnet. There we go, let's put that back. Now, it's pretty obvious to me that you could put lots of things on this. I mean, if you put a uh, propeller on here, you've obviously got a wind turbine generator. Put a paddle wheel, you've obviously got a water generator. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.